I always urge caution on young players. I think in today's day and age, there's too much hyper opinions. I think people are impressed by dazzling skills and then they start running to the hilltops with projections on these players, quickly forgetting that young players are learning the tricks and trades of the game. And then when they inevitably struggle on, on the road to success, because, you know, it's never linear, the same, you know, tags, the next this, that, the other are the same tags they essentially die by. That being said, it is hard not to be excited by Arsenal youngster Ethan Nunwary his potential and how he is as a player and I believe next season there should be some real integration into Arsenal's verse team I avoid comparing young players but he feels like he's part of the Phil Foldens the Sackers the Colby Maynos the exceptions to the rules for young players in fact I do think we have our very own Phil Folden in you know Ethan I think there's a lot of parallels between you know Phil Foden's development under Pep Guardiola and the many talking points that were provided and the many different positions he plays and how he's grown in stature there and also under Mikel Arteta what could happen at Arsenal bearing in mind Mikel Arteta has a track record with the existing Arsenal players and obviously the Jaden Sancho's and Sterling's of this world and he was also at Manchester City before he took his first job as Arsenal manager Back to Ethan, he's a typical Arsenal player. He must be, you know, he has the potential to be a poster boy in the same vein of Bukayo Saka. And not quite to his level, but in terms of Reese Nelson, Eddie Nketiah, Smith Rowe, Jack Wilshere, and many players that have progressed from Halen and cutting out careers. You look at Iwobi, you look at Joe Willock, you know, you look at Balogun, you look at Josh De Silva. There's plenty of players cutting trades in, in the game. And there's also other examples. You look at Eze, Nathan Teller, Harry Kane. At some point, they were in Arsenal's academy and then they went elsewhere and they're all um, footballers and playing at a high level, which also shows you that football is a you know funny old game of opinions. But back to Ethan, he's a typical Arsenal player. He's a natural born star, in my opinion. He has the stardust, he has the X factor that all of these kind of players have. He's very relaxed in his temperament. And at the same way, I like how he wants to make decisive moments. He's very rarely phased. He's fantastic in the pockets. He's got a fantastic passing range. He's capable of sheer brilliance technically, dancing past players, hitting it from 30 yards. And he's got the humility. Now, he knows how good he is, but you can see he's a team player and he comes across as someone that doesn't believe he's any better or worse than his fellow man and it's that humility that will take you far talent gets you in the room your motivation your stamina and motivation your willingness to learn um, and and behave like you're still essentially an, a learner and never an expert is what keeps you in the room and what has cut out careers of course Ethan is never going to be Messi or Cristiano Ronaldo but that example is an extreme one but it rings true people I genuinely believe he could be a Halen success story and I genuinely believe to some degree he needs more first team football next season um, um, next season, we have a potential to solve an, uh, an in, we we potentially could solve an internal problem with an internal solution. We all know we've got an issue around depth. We need to be in a scenario where we have a 20 man squad of different kind of ratings that we all believe in. At a push, I'd say we have 12. If we assume Trossard is on the bench, the 11 out there and Trossard's called upon. Of course, through different factors, you've got Partey, Gabriel Jesus, Tommy Yasu, Zinchenko, players that haven't always played on a consistent basis. So at a push, we've probably got 14. We need about 20. For, you know, I'll get on to it, but I'm not saying Ethan needs to play every minute of every game again I'll get on to why that would actually be counterproductive even though there are some young players that have been blooded on the scene from 16 to 17 years of age I think we could solve an internal solution you know I do think long term he is an 8 and a 10 and I think maybe that's why Arsenal are, are, are treading carefully with midfield additions and I think long term he'll be that but I think in the short and medium term he can play there but he could also deputize on the left or probably the right hand side in some capacity a bit like Phil Foden has done for the last few years and had a great season last season for Manchester City. The man's got the capacity to receive and dribble with, you know, at, at speed. He can slow the game down. He also has shown a willingness to contribute defensively. He's comfortable both in wide and central areas. You know, his ball retention and his and him on the half turn is a, is a crazy sight. He was born to play football. There's a reason he made history in September of 2022 when just aged 15 years and 181 days, he became Arsenal's youngest ever player or maybe even the youngest ever player in English top flight matches. Now, for every Cesc Fabregas or Rooney who, or Jack Wilshere, there's people like Matthew Briggs who, again, no disrespect or what was, I can't remember his name, James Vaughan at Everton. My point of saying that is not to criticise those players, it's just a career is never linear. Just because you've got a debut as a young player does not mean you're going to cut your teeth 
at the top level on a consistent basis. We also got to remember he's the youngest player to represent our first team when he came on in the three 0 win two seasons ago at Brentford. You know, he's a quality, he's a quality player, and he's continued his development and his slow integration into the first team. And you would have seen he came on as a substitute in our six 0 victory against West Ham back in February of earlier this year. The Hammers got hammered, and of course, you know psychologically there's going to be issues because he that's kind of the big time you know you're a young man you're playing with some players you're probably playing with FIFA and I'm sure that the, the, the more senior players or the guard and whatnot they want to make him feel comfortable but I would also say the fact that they were consistently trying to get him on in possession in that game shows you that the man has the ability to be here people um I think he's quality he's a quality player when you look at his the history he's made so far and he's not even scratched the surface it again underlines and underscores his potential on the pitch and undoubtedly his talent people you know he's a quality player when you hear the way Jack Wilshere, Arteta, Martinelli, Odegaard speak about the player you know they're not just saying this for no reason now again of course he's got a correlate that to on a first team basis and I think Per Mertesacker said it best when he said Ethan has a strong ability to master the ball dominate possession and is really effective in the final third he fits into Arsenal's style of play he is someone that will thrive on and off the pitch as a strong young gunner and will look forward to working with him during his ongoing development in years to come and that's a player man I have to say it again he plays with a swagger the link up plays lovely he's fantastic in the pockets he's very confident on the ball he wants the ball as well it's very easy to want the ball when the sun's shining and you're having a lot of possession. You would have seen on numerous occasions at under-21s level, he scored a number of vital goals, whether they were winners or equalisers or just responding collectively as a team to adversity. I, again, I genuinely believe his progression and trajectory into Arsenal's first team could loosely mimic Phil Foden at Manchester City under Pep. You know, as you know, Pep was Pep gradually eased him into the first team. And one thing I would I like about Phil Foden's development, and it's more of the collective environments of both teams, is... Phil Folders made the difference for, for Manchester City, but Manchester City have never lived or died by him having a good game. When Saka came through, nine times out of ten, probably until the last two seasons, if Saka had a good game or bad game, that directly correlated as to whether Arsenal were getting three points or not. Now, as you can see, Saka is still a decisive player. But the burden is being spread out. And I think that is the sort of environment you want for Ethan, if I'm completely honest. You would imagine next season he's playing under 21s for the majority of it and playing and training with the first team. But I think he needs to get some football, man. Again, we need to take our time with it, if I'm honest. You know, the modern game requires players really and truly to be able to play in a number of roles. You look at Foden, Cole Palmer, Slyly, even Bukayo Saka, a lot of footballers, you know. And as a young player trying to get into a first team challenger for titles, reality is you play where you can. If the manager says, play left back you might not be a left back but if you don't play you might not get first team football people um and I do think that's something as I said in the short medium and long term I even in fact in the short term he could be an option out wide long term is a 10 or an 8 um and I would like to see him exposed to regular football in the 8 or the 10 role because as good as folding is I won't quite say he struggles there but the man has said that's his position he hasn't been exposed to that you know when you hear the way I know people don't want to hear it but when you hear the way Gareth Southgate speaks about him and saying he doesn't play there at club level you do kind of see that correlate um to England at first team level. Now, all of these factors are not an issue, but Foden hasn't consistently played in that eight and the 10 as good as he is and is able to, he's able to play there. There's certain mannerisms at the top level that he lacks because he hasn't been exposed there really and truly. And that's the one thing I would say I would like to see change versus Phil Foden's progression and Ethan's. Now, obviously, if, if Ethan is able to be mentioned in the same breath as Foden in the next couple of years, he's doing something right. I do think, and again, as much as I want him to play, I do think his minutes will have to be managed very carefully. You know, he's got the ability, he's got the temperament. Now it's about consistency. As you know, in the professional game, you're playing three times in 10 days. Doesn't matter if you did the business on the Saturday, if in the Champions League, you're not. So we need to give him the time to develop that aspect tactically as well, because again, it's all about tactics and his ability to retain and, and replicate information given to him by Arsenal's coaching staff. Physically, it is a big ox to play Premier League and Champions League or high professional, high performance sport. So we're going to have to allow the 17 year old to get there because, you know, if we play on Tuesday, physically, he's going to have to recover in a couple of days to be able to play at the weekend. So he needs to be given time to develop that consistency, that physicality, you know, that 
and all of those kind of things I've mentioned. I would like him to be, I would say for Ethan, from what I've seen at under 21s level, I think you could be a tiny bit more prominent across 90 minutes. He can't, he just needs a second to make something happen, but I want to see you a bit more proactive across 90 minutes, but this isn't the criticism. This is something you expect of someone at his age. And I think he could be even more decisive, but this will all come in time. And I'd also say, let his personality shine when he's exposed to the first team, because you do see that humility, but these things will come people. And in a positive way, his exploits at youth level for Arsenal and England, they don't impress me anymore because I'm, I'm used to it, people. I believe he got 10 goals and three assists in all comps last season for the 21s. Some of you remember his hat-trick against Leicester, bagging against Chelsea, Spurs and Stoke, and a number of vital goals, people. And if I remember correctly, he got a lovely brace against Aston Villa. Long term, in conclusion, I think this is a player we can be very excited about. And I do think this is someone who, in his own way, in the short, medium term, could be exposed to more first team football and provide a solution of such, especially if we do not buy a winger in the summer, really and truly. And as, as someone that's multifunctional, he is someone that Mikel Arteta is criticised about Hey Lenders. He is someone that he could bet his hat on and that could be your somewhat poster boy. That is your Phil Folding, if I'm completely honest. He's in the right place where development's concerned, I believe. Mikel Arteta has shown players young and old. You know, you look at the players that are becoming managers now or doing their coaching badges. You look at the improvements several players young and old have made at Arsenal Football Club. You know, the Sackers, the Oligars, Enketia, Saliba. On top of the work we all know he did with Sancho and Sterling, he's got the right manager at the helm. And then you've got the right mentor with someone like Odegaard who's had to cope with the pressures of being a young player himself. And I use the term youth loosely, but we have got this youth project. I genuinely believe Ethan is one of the naturally gifted players of his generation. Generation. And I do think he could be the most exciting talent since Jack Wilshere and Bukayo Saka came through, give or take between, you know, someone like Max Dolman, who's only 14 and he'll get his own time to shine. Plus, I would say he's a real North Londoner, you know, Arsenal, we're all Arsenal and uh, technically we came from South, but he's born in Enfield. Now, as an Arsenal fan, as a North Londoner, a real North Londoner. I've been praying for this. So I, I support him even more, people. So, yeah, in short, I'd love to see Ethan exposed to more first-team football. But again, we have to be patient, slow cook him, let him develop. We're not privy to all the, you know, all the reasons as to why he may or may not be getting first-team football. But that's just my thoughts. I do think there's a spot for him next season. Let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Most importantly, thank you for listening. Stay safe, stay blessed. Peace.